Good morning, welcome. Call this meeting to order. I see a quorum. I'll now take a motion to confirm the minutes from December 11th, 2018. Motion. Moved by Councillor Holliday. All in favor, opposed, carried. Any declarations of interest at this time? Seeing none, are there any petitions at this time? Seeing none. Okay, just before we go through the uh, items, I'd like to welcome uh, Alexander Serrano, our new uh, solicitor. And uh, on a sad note, we're going to be losing Tim Crawford. Tim's going downtown and to be replaced by Sandra Burroughs. I think who's here today, Sandra? Where's Sandra here? Oh, still coming over, so she'll be replacing Tim. I think we should have a recorded vote on that, shouldn't we? Yep. Yeah, anyway, good luck downtown, Tim. I uh, have your cell number so we know how to find you. So. Anyways, good morning. This uh, seems very small in here now. Right, Francis? And our new vice chair, uh, Councillor Ford. Okay, we'll now go through the items. I want to also welcome uh, Councillor Peruzza to the Wild Wild West. Welcome. All righty. <clears throat> EY 21.1, final report, a portion of the lands formerly known as 115 Torberry Road, parts 109 to 113 of Block 152 and Lot 1 on Plan 66M 2436, part of Lot Control Exemption Application. Councillor Peruzza, you're moving deferral? One round to next day. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.2 request for direction report 880 890, the Queensway Zoning Bylaw Amendment. That's in my award. Uh, Councillor Ford, do you mind moving that on my behalf? I'll move. Sorry? This is 880 the Queensway? Yeah. Recorded vote on that. Recorded vote? Recorded vote to be requested to Council Holiday. All in favor? Council Nanzietta. Councillor Ford. Rhymes. Ruta, recorded vote. Recorded vote on on number two. Council, help. Just put your hand up. Say yes. Yeah. Opposed. Council Holly in the negative. That carries. Two point three. <coughs> request for direction report. Eleven ninety seven. The Queensway and eight Zora Street zoning bylaw amendment application. Uh, we're going to hold that for speakers. Two point four preliminary report five five zero nine Dundas Street West zoning bylaw amendment application in my ward. Councillor Ford, you move these staff recommendations okay. for me. Councillor Ford, move the recommendation on my behalf. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Two point five preliminary report twenty six fifty twenty six seventy two St Clair Avenue West zoning bylaw amendment and plan for of subdivision application. That is in um, Councillor Nunziata's ward. Yes, I have a, a, a motion um, to it to um, adopt the recommendation contained in the report December 14th from the Director of Community Planning, York District, with recommendation to amend it to read as follows: Notice for the community consultation meeting be given to landowners and residents within 240 meters of the site, and expanded in consultation with the ward councillor, with the additional cost to be borne by the applicant. Rosemary, you got that? On the screen, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.6, plenary report 170, the West Mall zoning bylaw amendment application. Council Ford, can you move the staff recommendations on my behalf? Council Ford moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Anthony, this is yours. Plenary report 2996, Western Road zoning bylaw amendment application. Council Peruzza, you're moving deferral the next day? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.8, application to remove two private protected private trees, 7 Edge Hill Road. We have speakers at 945. 2.9, application for fence exemption, 15 Lauren Bruce Drive. We have speakers at 10, 10 a.m. 2.10, application for fence exemption, 3 Azrock Road. Speakers at 10. Application for fence exemption, 242 Edenbridge Drive, uh, speakers at 10. 2.12, application for fence exemption, 914 Islington Avenue, speakers at 10. 2.13, application for fence exemption, 58A Jasper Avenue, speakers at 1015. 2.14, application for fence exemption, 209 the Queensway, sorry, the Kingsway, uh, speakers at 1015. 
2.15, application for fence exemption 16 Nordale Crescent, speakers at 1015. 2.16, application for fence exemption 518 Prince Edward Drive North, speakers at 1030. 2.17, application for fence exemption 48 Sword Bill Drive, speakers at 1030. 2.18, residential demolition application 62 to 68 Long Branch Avenue and 28 Marina Avenue. Councillor Ford, do you mind moving recommendation number two on my behalf? I'll move it. Councillor Ford moves recommendation number two. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.19, speed limit reduction. Homeview Avenue, White Avenue, and Pritchard Avenue. Councillor Nunzietta. <coughs> 2.19? Yes. Okay, um, Rosemary, you have my motion. You want me to read it? Well, we can't, we can't speak okay, to so this is on 219. It is to reduce the speed limit on Homeview Avenue between Jane and Florence Crescent to 30K and reduce the speed limit on White Avenue between Jane and Florence Crescent to 30K. <coughs> And reduce the speed limit on Pritchard Avenue between Jane and Florence Crescent to 30K. Okay, so the recommendation was not to approve, but you're moving approval on all three. Huh? The recommendation was not to approve, but you're recommending yes. approval on all three. Yes. Okay. Recorded. Recorded vote. All in favor? Councillor Nunzietta, Councillor Ford, Councillor Grimes, Councillor Prutza, and the opposition, uh, Councillor Holiday. Carries. 2.20 speed limit amendments. Renforth Drive between Bloor Street West and Rathburn Road. In Councillor Holiday's ward, Councillor Holiday. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, <coughs> move the contents of the report. Do the recommendation going from 50 to 40? <coughs> Correct, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.21 permit parking program within newly created 15A permit area, Rutherford Avenue to Victoria Boulevard from street specific to area based. Councilor Nunziata. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, I would um, I would just like to uh, defer it to the next meeting. Defer the next day. All in favor, defer the next day. Opposed? Carried. 2.22, introduction of overnight on-street parking permit, Kane Circle in Councilor Nunziata's ward. Yes, so I'll move the recommendation. Councilor Nunziata moves the staff recommendation. All in favor, opposed, carried. 2.23, parking regulation amendment. Holden present. Councillor Ford. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll be moving staff recommendations. Councillor Ford moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.24, parking regulation amendment. Matthew Court. Councillor Holliday. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move the staff recommendations in the report. Councillor Holliday moves the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.25, parking regulation amendment. Pritchard Avenue between Florence Crescent and Jane Street. Councillor Nunziata. Yes, move the recommendation, staff recommendation. Councilor Nunziata moves the staff recommendation. All in favor, opposed, carried. 2.26, parking regulation amendment, Station Road in my ward. Please move the staff recommendations, Councilor Ford. I'll move it. Councilor Ford moves the staff recommendation on my behalf. All in favor, opposed, carried. 2.27, installation removal of on-street accessible parking spaces, December 2018, delegated and Councillor, uh, in my ward, in Nunziata, three and five. <coughs> Councillor Nunziata. Yes, move the uh, staff recommendation. Councillor Nunziata moves the staff recommendation. All in favor, opposed, carried. 2.28, appointments to business area, uh, boards of management in wards one, two, three, and five. Councillor uh, Ford. Uh, move staff recommendations. Councillor Ford moves the staff recommendations. All in favor, opposed, carried. On to new business. So we have to uh, add 2.29 parking regulations, Esther Lorry Drive, <coughs> and 2.30 requests for attendance at the Toronto Local Appeal Body Hearing, 10 Aye. Academy Road. We have a motion to add these to the agenda. Moved by Councillor Ford. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Um, can we deal with these now? Okay, so um, 2.29, Councillor Ford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will uh, move the recommendations are in front of uh, Community Council. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.30, request for attendance at local appeal body hearing, 10 Academy Road. Councillor Nunziata. Move the recommendation. 
That's another gentleman who's a staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Okay, so we're five minutes early for our first item, so I'm going to move to 2.3, request for direct report 1197, the Queensway and 8 Zora Street zoning bylaw amendment application. We have a speaker, Stephen Robushki. Did I pronounce that correctly? Good morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning, members of the council, Mr. Chairman. Yep, you uh, have five minutes. Thank you, sir. My name is Stephen Werbowi. I am one of the owners of 1199, the Queensway, which is adjacent immediately to the west of the <coughs> 1197 proposed development. <coughs> Our concern, aside from issues of drainage and uh, snow load and rain load on the property, <coughs> is uh, with respect to the height of the building uh, and the proposed density of it. Uh, the property that is proposed for development <coughs> 0.17 uh, area, land area, and the proposal is for a multi-story building uh, of approximately 13 stories with uh, <coughs> approximately 300 residential units. In our view, it is extremely dense and it is contrary to the area's best interest. Uh, the, uh, uh, the current bylaw uh, in terms of height requirements or height restrictions are much more in keeping with the area. Now, <coughs> my <coughs> understanding is that the developer takes shelter from the fact that there is uh, uh, development across the street at Zora and Queensway, 12-story building and multiple other buildings behind it to the, to the south. Uh, from our point of view, that's a much larger area that has been developed the area that we're talking about in 1197, the Queensway, is much, much smaller, so the density of the building is much higher. Um, <coughs> it will have significant impact on our property at 1199, the Queensway. Uh, the, uh, um, a 13-story structure immediately to the, uh, to the east of us um, will create snow load and rain load on our property. Uh, there's already ponding in the back of our, of our property so those are essentially our concerns. We're very, very concerned with the uh, density of this property development. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, questions? Uh, I have a couple questions. This is uh, part of my new ward now, and I didn't take part in some of the consultation, but did you get a chance to take any part of the consultation process through this up, uh, application process? I did. Okay. All right, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, questions of staff. I'll just ask Mr. Questwell, as I'm, I wasn't up on the uh, at the uh, public consultation, it was before uh, uh, Councillor Channel. Could you maybe address some of the comments from um, uh, the deputant? Is this uh, within keeping what's happening on the Queensway? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we we share the similar concerns to what the applicant has expressed today. It's uh, it's quite clear from our staff report that uh, we believe that the proposal is just out of character. Um, and uh, drawing comparisons to the, n the area to the, the right on the other side of, of the side road we feel is inappropriate. We spelled that out in our staff report. It went through a different planning process on the other side. Um, so the recommendation in the staff report was to uh, attend at the LPAT in opposition to the current proposal. Obviously, if the applicant is showing a willingness to move, we are also recommending that we continue discussions in those regard, but in its current format, we agree with the what the deputant had to say. Thank you. Uh, just to, to, I guess, to Mr. Crawford, um, the, the applicant's got some ponding in his, um, in his, we can deal with, can we deal with that through uh, buildings or? my questions thank you so I'll speak so I'll be moving the staff recommendations and uh, uh, sir if you can just hang tight and I'll have one of my staff we can see if we can help you with the ponding issue uh, Mary Campbell's from my office I'm sure she's here but she's here and I'll have you hooked up with her and we'll see if we can help you uh, through planning with the, with the with the ponding okay any further speakers to the item 
Seeing none, so uh, move the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Kim's going to come down and see you now. Okay, we're going to our first item. We're on schedule now. 2.8. Application removed two ravine protected private trees, 7 Edge Hill Road. Uh, Shane Goldman, Mr. Goldman here. Good morning, sir. Welcome, and you have yeah. five minutes. Okay, uh, good morning, counselors. Can you and pull uh, it up, Shane, if you'll just make that out. better. You're not hunched over. Here you go. Okay, good morning. Um, I'm the homeowner at Nine Edge Hill and Seven Edge Hills Arborist. Um, we have two trees that are in fair condition that are heavily infested with gypsy moth egg masses. Um, there are two birch trees. There were four birch trees on the property. One is on the city side of the ravine line. Um, this tree was issued a permit for removal. Um, one of the trees on the ravine side was issued a permit for removal. The two others were not. I think it was the position of RNFP that these trees could be preserved. Um, each of them have, I would say, upwards of 2,000 individual gypsy moth egg masses. Um, under the, the pesticide ban in Ontario, we don't see any chemical way of, of dealing with the egg masses. Um, the homeowner at 7 and 9 Edge Hill has spent a considerable amount of money treating high-value mature oaks on site between banding the trees, injecting them, having climbers go up and scrape egg masses. It's, it's our position that um, the most reasonable way to manage this is to, is to remove the trees. Each individual egg mass can release between 200 and uh, 500 individual caterpillars. Um, for trees that have upwards of 2,000 egg masses in them, that could be half a million little caterpillars. Um, and again, the, the homeowners spent a considerable amount of money treating high value mature trees on site. I wouldn't say that the birch are really fall into that category. Um, and to have a climber go up and scrape individual egg masses off the trees just doesn't seem realistic or a cost-effective option for maintaining existing trees on the property in the coming, the coming years. Um, there's a tree on the city side that was granted a permit, um, exact same condition, exact same level of infestation. Um, the city's arborist... Um, I have a permit here. Uh, it was approved by uh, Julian Ambrosi, who's one of the um, one of the city inspectors on, on the city side. They granted a permit for a birch tree that was in identical condition. Um, on the ravine side, there's two trees that that weren't granted permits. So there seems to be a bit of disparity between the city side and and ravines. Um, that's that's why we're appealing the decision. Um, for for the permit for these these two remaining trees, I don't know if you guys want to see see some pictures of the how dense the the egg masses are. how well you guys can see that um, it might be actually a little bit easier if you look at the yeah. okay okay so you can see the level of how many egg masses are on these these individual trees um, okay I think that's that okay that covers it you have a question from uh, Councillor Holiday yep. hello hi so thanks for coming can you just go over some of the trees that were granted permits and some that were not and where they were in relation to these trees. That's not necessarily in the report, so it's a bit of new information. 
so when we're submitting a report we submit a report to ravines for everything that's on the ravine side of the line right. so there's a report for three birch trees on the ravine side um, one of the birch landed on the city side near the road allowance um, now the ravine line hang, hang on one second yep. help me understand that so if i remember the the drawings there's a map right you can look online yeah. the ravine side runs kind of through the middle of the lot through the middle of the house and it's towards kinda, the front it's kind of the backyard of the house and it has a little bit of the house and then there's the front yard which is the city side it's not ravine land right okay so uh, these three trees are on the ravine side what were the, what were where were the other trees that the were three granted? birch one of which got a permit and two did, that didn't um, are, are at the side of the house. Okay. Um, the one that did get a permit on the city side is, you know, maybe 10 meters from the road. Okay. And so I just want to be clear on your point. You were, you were questioning why one got approved and the others didn't. The tree on the city side, the birch on the city side is in what I would say almost identical condition to the two that are on the ravine side that didn't get a permit. Um, on the city side, their arborists thought that this rationale justified a permit. Um, they issued a permit for the removal of that tree. We've removed it. Um, the two on the ravine side were not issued permits. Okay. All right. And I guess the last thing, you mentioned you're an arborist? Okay, I, I don't know if you're familiar, but you will come to know, I guess. There, there's a brand new report um, that's just that's on its way through committee about the gypsy moth spray this year. Have you had a chance to see that? I haven't, but I okay. know that that area in particular, the city has not managed that in the last few years, so there's been no Dipel BT sprays for that. You'll be happy with this, especially if you live next door. Okay. Because they're spraying. And they're I'm spraying. Really, they're spraying next spraying year. Spraying the whole area. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, and I'm really happy about that. And it was confirmed to me yesterday, 100%. This property is getting sprayed with uh, BTK. Okay. So, and you said you were next door. No, the um, the homeowner at Nine Edge Hill also owns Seven Edge Hill, so they're managing. Oh, okay. we're, we're managing both properties. I so I'm uh, forgive me. I, I thought you lived on Edge Hill, so you're the arborist for both the properties. Yeah, for the homeowner okay. at both. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, talking to us. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, uh, we have forestry. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go up here. We'll be great. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Could you just state who you are? I met you yesterday, but I think you're new to council, just so we know who. Yes, I'm. Uh, my name is Yaroslav Medwitsky, and I'm the urban forestry supervisor, but uh, specifically for ravine and natural heritage protection areas. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming today. Um, I wanted to uh, confirm something that was very important in your, uh, to your knowledge. Provided the council approves this, are we seeing a, a big change in the amount of BTK applied in central Etobicoke? It looks like the areas are expanded, and, and in particular, is Seven Edge Hill being covered by the spray this year? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, that's correct. Seven Edge Hill will be covered uh, in the BTK spray. Of course, if it's approved by council. As long as it's approved. Now, to the benefit of my colleagues, the BTK spray, can you take 30 seconds and just explain what it does to gypsy moths and, and how we do it? Okay, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty ugly. It's a it's a biological insecticide, completely safe to humans, wildlife, and it specifically attacks uh, gypsy moth. And what it does, it basically um, prevents it from uh, being able to feed on leaves, the caterpillars themselves, and they basically uh, starve to death and get poisoned and die. Okay, and so we, we, in many cases, apply it with a helicopter? That's correct. Apply the, this is, uh, That's this correct. is a report for a contract with Zimmer Air Service. That's correct. So they, they spray overhead and they, they, they destroy the gypsy moths. That's correct. They'll spray the entire neighborhood. Okay, so I, and, and the homeowner raised a really valid point in this report. You know, the gypsy, gypsy moths are tough. They, uh, they make a mess on the property. They are a big nuisance, but it sounds like the city is going to be treating for it and treating that entire area. I just wanted to get some detail uh, because this is new to me. 
I understand that some trees were granted approval to be removed, but I think it's two trees in this report were not granted approval. Can you explain why, or do you know? Why, okay, so we, we received in the ravine section a uh, permit application to remove three trees for this specific reason. Um, the bylaw doesn't authorize us to issue a permit for this specific reason because a tree is a host for a specific disease. Um, we granted uh, the issuance of a permit for one tree because that tree was in poor condition. The other two trees are considered healthy and so we denied the permit for those. Uh, I'm not aware of the other application. I, I, I was a bit confused because uh, the speaker was talking about city trees and so I don't know whether he meant a tree on private property that's protected by the private tree bylaw or a tree that was actually located in the city right of way. But I would suspect that if, if we issued a permit for another tree on this property, it would have been because that tree was also in poor condition. Because the private tree bylaw and the city tree bylaws don't authorize us to issue permits because a tree is a host for a, for a disease. Understood. Uh, and w could some of the conditions also be related to development for the removal of trees? So if, uh, if there's a, a legitimate concern about the constructability of a home or it literally the footprint is over top of the tree, then the city grants approval. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. That, that's correct. Uh, there are various other reasons why we would be able to allow issue trees for construction-related, trees in uh, poor condition in ravines if it's part of uh, an approved stewardship plan, for example. Those are some of the reasons why we issue permits. And you're very confident that these trees are in fact part of the ravine protected lands? Very confident through you, Mr. Chair. Because I noticed the line is awful close, but you checked that. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I, I, I did check that. These two trees in particular are about five and a half meters uh, inside the ravine area. I know uh, if you look through our eye view mapping, there could be one or two feet dis uh, discrepancy, but these trees are clearly in the in the ravine area. One of the trees is over 30 centimeters anyway, so even if it was outside, it would still be protected by the private tree bylaw. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? See none, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hawley, speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm gonna move the staff recommendations, and that is to preserve the tree. Some of my colleagues may be surprised because they know that I have a fairly generous approach when it comes to the removal of trees, <clears throat> but I did do my homework in this case, uh, quite a bit of it. Um, the, the trees are in fact part of the ravine system. Uh, it's awful close on the map, but I checked even uh, the, the site plan for the construction of the home. And there's no question, everybody knows that it's part of the ravine. The ravine protection bylaw is a, uh, a, ver a very robust one. Ravine trees are treated a little differently than the private trees that are on people's properties. We have bylaws that protect those as well, and you often see me move motions that don't necessarily uh, support that particular bylaw and grant removal of the tree, but we know the ravine trees are, are uh, very important to the ravine system, and look, if anyone knows what happened in Hurricane Hazel, you know, lands got washed away. These trees and the root systems are what keeps these ravines together. So uh, the test has to be really high as to why you want to remove a tree. Um, I, uh, I also spent a lot of time thinking about the gypsy moth issue and, and the speaker came and, and talked about it. Yeah, there's no question there's, uh, there's eggs all over this tree, but there's eggs all over the trees in the neighborhood. And if we went around and granted permits just based on the gypsy moths, we, we'd be cutting trees down everywhere and it's all over uh, the ward. Uh, but there was really good news and the report is really new. So to be fair, the applicants probably didn't know about this when they applied for the exemption but the newest report shows the extent of the, uh, the gypsy moth treatment and uh, it's, it's a good chunk of the ward and that's uh, the first time we've seen something that, that big as far as I've ever seen in Etobicoke and it's quite dramatic. A helicopter comes by and sprays uh, BTK to, to destroy these gypsy moths and uh, I think people will be really relieved about that. So um, for that reason, uh, you know, the, these trees I think are going to get treated with uh, the BTK. Hopefully the, the gypsy moth issue will be dealt with this year and uh, the homeowner will see some improvement. Um, and that's to say it's not without a lot of care <coughs> that I've reached this conclusion, but I think the best thing to do is to take the staff recommendations in this case, and that's why I support them. Thank you, Councilor Audley. Any further speakers? Um, just before we finish off, I'll just go to a staff. On this contract with Zimmer, how do we communicate that to the uh, residents when we see these helicopters spraying and people aren't running for their lives? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not uh, aware, I'm not as associated with this program, but my understanding there is a robust communication plan that they do prior. Uh, I think there's might be community meetings. Uh, okay. uh, there may be leaflets or whatever. Okay. They, it's communicated. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Holliday is moving the staff recommendations. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 2.9 application fence exemption 15 Lauren Bruce Drive. Are there any speakers on Lauren Bruce Drive? Sorry? Oh. It's uh, Paul, Paul Mello? Sorry, Paul. Good morning. Welcome, sir. You have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm, <coughs> I'm the owner of 415 Lauren Bruce Drive. And I built this fence in, in 2013, so like almost six years ago. Here, this the fence looks like. And I check uh, the lot in North York City, so it can pass over over six meters. It can pass uh, more than um, and two meters. So that's uh, 2.4 to my side, because my side, that's a low point. The high point, that's less than, than two meters. That's uh, five feet point seven. So I check about high. For the high point, I'm less than two meters. I build a fence. It's a vinyl fence. I can't cut, because that's a stucco fence. And the reason I have that returning wall is for is for my pulpit is more raw and my, my neighbors. And I have uh, all the neighbors around to my house and he signed and, and he signed, approved the fence. I don't see that's not, uh, no problem about I, uh, oh, that's it. Okay, uh, 15 Lauren Bruce Drive. Um, any questions, Epi? Yes. Councilor Nunn's yet a yeah, question. This is my area now, new yeah. area. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you, you have a petition with neighbors. Can, can we um, have a copy of that petition? Yes, yes. Because I sent no, to the Nobody's city. contacted I, my office, so I'm yes. just wondering, yeah, if yeah, you can, I give, can us, give to you this if one. If you can give a us copy. a copy. So this was, th this fence was um, um, erected when, what year? Uh, two, uh, 2013. Oh, 2013. I built this fence, yes. Yeah. And that time I check uh, about the highs, about the highs and everything. Yeah. I check on a computer about the highs and it can be over two meters for the high point. That's less than two meters for the high point because my, uh, my property is the low one. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. We have another question by Councillor Holiday. Oh. Quick question. Oh, sir, come up. Quick one. I just I want to understand. You're on this side. This this picture here. This shows uh, concrete here and concrete yes, wall. Yes, yes, sir. That's and that, my, so that's your fence. Yeah, that's that's my fence and that's my driveway. Yeah. And you built it? I built 2013. Okay, you did the concrete and the fence. I did the concrete, everything. I buy this house. That's a big mess, and I fix it. And where's your property lines? The other side of the fence. Uh, the property line that's uh, four inches away to this fence. On the far side. Exactly. So still, still have the old fence. I don't even touch there. And your are your neighbors are mad at you over this fence? Uh, yeah, I say it's too high, but that's less than and and two meters. That's five point seven for this side. I want my privacy. How much higher is his land from your driveway? To the top is is two point four meters. Because his backyard's built up, right? Yes. That's why you have the returning wall. No, it's not 2.4. If I, if there's no fence there and I'm standing on your driveway, how high is his backyard? To your knees? Uh, more? To the height of the returning wall. To the height of the retaining wall. Yes. Okay. To the height of the That's retaining helpful. Wall. I can't see it from the pictures. So yeah, you. no problem. I have right. some more features and uh, and that's there. Thank you, sir. See no further questions. Thank you. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing no further speakers, questions of staff? Councillor Nunziata to speak. You have questions of staff? Oh, okay. So um, I will um, move um, um, recommendation to. 
to grant the um, application. Any further speakers? Two ten application for fence exemption three Azrock Road, uh, Mary Leto, Leto, Mary Leto here. It's a beautiful fence. Mary, Mary Leto. <coughs> Two point ten fence exemption three Azrock Road. Okay, seeing none. Councillor Nunziata, questions to staff. No. No. no? Speakers, Councillor Nunziato. Ten. Yeah. So on number ten, I'm going to, um, and staff have the um, the recommendation. I'm going to refuse the application. Okay. Councillor Nunziato, moving number one to refuse the application. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> 11, application for fence exemption 242 Eden Bridge Drive. We have a number of speakers, Janet Keith. Good morning, Ms. Keith, welcome. You wanna pull that mic down probably a little bit. There you go. Does it go down that far? A little okay. bit more maybe, there you go. Okay. And welcome, you have five minutes, good morning. Thank you. Good fences make good neighbors and bad fences make bad neighbors. The fence, at 242 Eden Bridge is a bad fence. I have two concerns. First and foremost, safety. And the second, the implications of making an exemption. On a safety level, this wooden corner fence exceeds the bylaw, not by one, not by two, not by three inches, but by 22 inches. A driver's view making a left-hand turn from Knoll Drive, <coughs> excuse me, onto Edenbridge is obstructed by nearly 50%. It forces the driver to stop past the white stop line onto the pedestrian walkway. While Pedestrians can easily be seen during the day. At night, it is dangerous. And even in the morning with the sun's glare. And my experience has been that pedestrians don't even break a stride, <coughs> when, especially when crossing at a stop sign. Safety is also an issue with cars turning right from Edenbridge onto Knoll Drive. Frequently, a car is parked opposite the fence. So cars passing that vehicle risk being hit by a car turning right onto Knoll Drive because they're obstructed by the fence. And also <coughs> of note and concern is that Knoll Drive is a school bus road. Okay, my other concern is the exemption to the bylaw. The city has bylaws to protect the rights of citizens. Our bylaws also inform citizens of their obligations to the community. The owner contractor of 242 Edenbridge knew his obligations before erecting his fence. The exemptions of today are the norms of tomorrow. Every corner in the neighborhood of 242 Edenbridge has a similar lot with an unobstructed view of the street and the sidewalk. If this exemption is approved, how many more corner lot owners, especially contractors, will seek similar changes? Now, as background information, the fence at 242 Edenbridge was constructed in August 2017. As the posts were going in, I spoke with the owner contractor and told him I did not think his fence complied with the bylaws. He responded that he had built a similar fence in Scarborough. I sent a photo 
of the fence post to the city and also to the then councillor Cam uh, Campbell. When the fence was constructed about a month later, or fully constructed, my neighbour Judy at 3 Knoll Drive, who unfortunately isn't, or fortunately, is in Australia right now, submitted a petition signed by at least 15 neighbours to Councillor Campbell. I might be one of the few people or the person to speak for the neighbourhood, but I can say I speak for everybody. From public land. Now, 42 pedestrians and five cyclists died in the city in 2018. How can council approve an exemption that puts people's lives at risk when the city's Vision Zero program is trying to reduce that into those intolerable numbers? So in conclusion, I'm asking council to reject this exemption Otherwise, the message will be clear. Neighbours have no right to a safe environment and contractors no obligation to provide one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have a question by Councillor Holliday. Um, thank you for speaking to us today. I just wanted to just go over very quickly one thing that you mentioned in your speech today is that someone approached the contractor while it was being built and, and express concerns and and the result of that were, were you you were told that uh the he told me he had all he had built a same fence same height in scarborough so you, are you're very confident that at least the issue had been flagged early on I, and that's why i yeah. i took photos i sent them to the city because i in my mind i thought they could prevent the fence going up before it became a real fence but obviously, when I looked on the website, the city is just overwhelmed with so many demands of complaints from people such as me. Thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Any further questions of the deputant? Seeing none, thank you very much. <coughs> Our next speaker, Fernando Greco. Good morning, Mr. Greco. Welcome, sir. Good morning. You have uh, five minutes. Thank, thank you for uh, giving me a chance to speak on this on behalf of uh, my father-in-law. His English is not the greatest. That's why he's asked me to do it. Uh, <coughs> um, as the lady before me uh, spoke, uh, the issue that both myself and my father-in-law have with this fence is a, is a safety issue. Um, anytime, and I've been going to the house numerous times in the last few months because uh, we're doing some renovations and I'll be moving into it. Anytime I leave uh, Noel Drive, um, it's very obvious that it's a safety concern because I can't see any of the traffic coming from the left-hand side on uh, Eden Bridge. Um, and I would hope the council takes the safety of its uh, citizens and also, there's a lot of children coming into the neighborhood as the demographics are changing. There's a lot of young families moving in the area. Uh, the other concern, I realize that council probably will not consider it, but uh, it's, it bothers both him and myself. It's the fact that uh, we were able to sit on our veranda and look at a park. Now, if I sit out there, all I'm seeing is a brown fence. Um, my father-in-law has been there for over 40 years. I've been going to the house myself over 30 years. And to me, this is a drastic change. Um, I realize that that's not the kind of issues that council um, is concerned with, but to us it is a concern. But as I said at the beginning, the safety issue is what we are really concerned with. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Questions? No, seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, Gail Hepworth. <laughs> Good morning, Ms. Hepworth. Welcome. Good morning. You I have five minutes. Thank you. I understand my husband also sent an email. So here's the petition that was signed by the neighbors. We were aware there was a contractor there i know i was there the day that the bylaw inspector came and explained to the contractor that the fence was in violation 
of the city property boundaries the contractor doesn't give a shit it's you know as far as he's concerned he dug the holes he stuck the poles up the fence went up and we're we're fine we're very frustrated because we've been trying to mitigate this fence in position ever since it started going up we recognized immediately that it was a real problem for us I walk my dog in the park across the street twice a day. It is very, very dangerous. Along Eden Bridge Drive, the, the drive itself curves in and out. At Knoll Drive, the drive curves into Eden Bridge. The traffic comes along very fast along that area. It may be posted at one number. That is not what people drive along that stretch of road you are forced to come further and further out because he's literally built the fence within 18 inches of the sidewalk on both the side yard and the front yard which imposes on the entire corner of that area there are people working in the area there are home homemakers that are walking those streets they're on their phones they're not paying attention the cars are not paying attention. When I try to cross the streets and with my dog, I am very concerned because you can look in one direction to see whether or not someone is approaching, but then you have to look in the other direction to see if someone's coming in that direction. And it's very difficult when traffic is coming very, very far and you have no sense of where anything is you can't you can't get any sense back when you're driving again it's very very dangerous because you're coming up to that curb and you're having to impose your car outside before when they didn't have a fence built on the Eden Bridge side of the corner at least the setback was half of the property so it's you know, he's purposefully built the fence out and around and back again. If it came back that far, that would be very helpful because at least then we would get some sense of what is approaching. There is a gas station on the corner at Scarlet Road. There's a lot of traffic that comes because of the gas station on Scarlet Road. So we're very concerned. We're concerned that there are pedestrians in the area that are elderly. There are pedestrians in the area that are young kids. There's a lot of people walking dogs in the area. And we do not have any visibility. So as I'm here on behalf of all of my neighbors because it has been really hard for us to put up with this for over a year. And we're hoping that we're going to have some mitigation with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yep. Oh, you have a question, yeah. Councilor Anziata? Uh, just a question. I don't know if I misunderstood, but did you say that you were there when the inspector came? Mm hmm. So the inspector came after the fence uh, was. When uh, the neighbors corrected. called to say that yeah. the posts were going in, that the fence was going up, and the yeah. fence was outside of the bylaw. The inspector came and was having a conversation with the conver with the contractor. Oh, okay. The con this must have been in September when he was starting to build the fence. Okay. And the bylaw inspector said to him, he's built the fence on the city piece of the property, and basically his thing was, I don't care. You know, it's my corner. I'm going to build my fence. So he just continued building it because I thought we heard from one. Oh, okay. No, it's okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, he had total disrespect for the municipal rules about anything. Thank okay. you. Any further speakers to the item? The owner's not here on the fence? No? Okay, uh, questions of staff by Councillor Holliday. Thank you, this is actually for transportation. Oh, Luigi. So it's not in the report, but I think in some of the work that I did on this, we found out, or you knew, that a good chunk of this fence is on the city's right-of-way, is that correct? Through the chair, uh, Councillor, that is correct. Uh, the, um, the information that we received from our uh, Land and Property Surveys uh, Unit of Engineering and Construction Services indicates that the property line is set back from the rear edge of the sidewalk. It sort of varies, but yep. it's approximately 0.25 meters to one meter. 
and yep. um, the fence is within that setback. So it's definitely in on the city right of way. So the fence is too tall. It's not configured properly, and it's also on the city's right of way. Uh, and so would it be fair to say that this homeowner at minimum, regardless of what we say today, is going to be reconstructing a bunch of that, or at least removing a bunch of that fence because it's on city land? Uh, through the chair again. Um, Council, that's correct. We've been in contact with the homeowner after we were advised that the fence, we were not aware that the fence was built illegally on city property, but we were advised of that after the fact. So we've been in contact with the homeowner and uh, the homeowner sent us an email uh, just before the Christmas break and he advised us that he is willing to eliminate the portion of the fence as on the city right of way and will relocate it entirely on site. And that's a substantial amount of the fence if I remember correctly. That's correct. Great. Thank you very much. Any further questions of staff? No, I'm sorry, we're not allowed to take. Any further questions of staff? Seeing none, Councillor Holliday to speak. Thank you, I'll be fairly brief. Um, it's very clear. Uh, I'm gonna refuse the application for exemption and I'm gonna require that the homeowner come into compliance with the law. And that includes uh, correct the piece of the fence that's on city property. Um, I, uh, I agree with uh, many people who had sight line concerns. I had the same when I visited the site. I will make one special note though. Um, the bylaw does allow the homeowner to build some type of fence on the property that's much shorter. Um, that is their right to do so. They can do that on the private lands. Um, we will, uh, if the homeowner talks to me about it, great. Uh, we can see what, what can be done, but it's my intention that this, uh, this be refused. Thank you. Any further speakers? Seeing none, Councilor Holly's moving refusal. All in favor, opposed? Carried. Two point one two application fence exemption one nine one four Islington Avenue. Are there any speakers on nine one four Islington Avenue? Nine one four Islington. No speakers. I have uh, staff to the floor, please. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Just Chair. a couple questions here. So I guess picture number attachment two, there's a picture from the front wrought iron fence built on a little retaining wall. That's in compliance. That's, that's that good. Compliance, okay. Yes, so going down the side, I guess number four, <clears throat> there's a fence, a fence and a fence. Correct. Um, any idea why they put two of those chain link fences? Did you get a chance to talk to the homeowner or no? That's on the neighboring property. Um, that was their choice. It's in compliance with the bylaw. The neighbors got two? The one is on the one side and the other, um, sorry, they're on each individual property. Those particular fences were in compliance of the bylaw. Okay, and then you've got that portion there. If I go to uh, attachment five, it looks like a concrete slab, a little deck's built, and then you've got that high portion there. That's what's not in compliance? The, the raised portion of the fence is not in compliance, correct. What is, does that look like, is that a garage on the other side? It looks like a garage. Yes. Okay. And then on the, I see the corner of the house there. Is there any windows peering into that? Um, from my knowledge, no. No. Okay. So um, if I had them bring down that panel, I guess, where the shovel's leaning against there, how far would that have to come down? Um, currently, it's at the 2.43 meters. It'd have to be 2 meters, so roughly 0.43 meters. And that's a, that's a wood fence. Would that be easy to do in your mind? It, like it's it wood. It, it's wood. Correct. It, it all is depending, but it would be. And there, like the, that, is that a deck it's sitting on? It's parallel to it, so it's 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 plumb to the, it's to the ground. So, are we taking it from the concrete slab, or we're taking it off the top of that from the concrete slab? Correct. We're t correct. It's taking it up. The concrete slab. Pardon me. The concrete slab is parallel, and from that point up, it is that 2.43 meters. So it have to come down 0.4, which is what that's. I'm a huge guy. What is it? Point four. About six inches. Six inches. Okay. Those are my questions. Okay. What number is that? Twelve, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, no one showed up to speak to this. Six inches. Um, the garage on the other side. I'm just going to move uh, number two. Grant the exemption um, to allow the. Allow the exemption. All in favor? Good. Opposed? Carried. Here's the rain. 
2.13 application for fence exempt 58A Jasper Avenue. 58A. Uh, Deleuze Neves. Mr. Is it Deleuze? Deleuze Neves? 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 No? Emma Silvera? Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Can you just pull that down just a little bit so we can hear you and, and, and welcome you in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Emma Silvera and I am residing at 58 A Jasper since 2010. And uh, when we bought the house, uh, we only had the city fence on the side, on the left side of the house. Um, so we have two small children and we decided to build a carport, which we have a uh, permit for. Uh, let's show you. Okay, so we do have a, a, a carport that it goes from my house to a little bit less than the end of the house. So with the city fence, what I had the problems is with the raccoons on the, my neighbor's house. Um, he had a shed um, a little bit raised from the top of the floor. So there is like a, a family of raccoons there, which it doesn't bother me, but uh, because I have the garbage on the sides, they used to just climb the uh, city fence and come over and make a big mess on my house. So we decided to build a, um, a fence on it, on the carport. And, um, it looks and this is the actual base plan if you see it it's too big so it's under the it's two it's two meters but the only part that i went off it was the lattice part because even though i built the fence okay um the the raccoons used to climb the uh city fence and just go on top of that little hole that has there so, and I still come here. So one day when I arrived to my house, there was a huge mama raccoon there, which I was afraid of. I couldn't even get to my car to turn on. So my husband decided to put the lattice on top of the fence. And that is the extra part of the fence. That's the only part. I have no problems whatsoever. Um, I guess my, na my neighbor did not like it, but for the safety of my kids, because they play on the dry, on the, on the carport, on the driveway. And, uh, that's the only extra part that I have, the lattice. That's, that's what it is. It's nothing more than that. And I just want to make sure my kids are safe because of this family of raccoons. I'm, I'm afraid they can bite them. So I have this, the, the fence all the way to almost the end of the neighbor's house. So they, they don't come anymore since I put the lattice. They don't climb anymore. So that's my only concern Kay. about my kids. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, just um, um, so your neighbor, uh, where the fence is, there's no driveway for your neighbor, right? Um, it has a driveway, but it's on the on the actual close to the street. He has a driveway. Uh, okay, but not where the the fence is. No, no, not where the fence is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Holly, a question. Thank you. Um, did you build the fence, or did you have a contractor do it? My husband and a partner. Okay. And. Did you plan to have a fence that was too tall? No, I didn't plan it. No, I did not plan it. Like, I mean, I did plan it to build a fence in the future, but a regular fence. And I, I put two meters on it. But it's just because the raccoons kept on coming on that hole that it was. They were climbing the city fence on my side and then just going over to just. So how long between the time you built the fence? So the wood part, not the lattice, is I, th I think is compliant. And then you said you added a lattice. How long was the time difference between the two? Um, it was like probably a week after we built the fence because we, we realized that raccoons kept on coming and he practically closed that, that part with the lattice. So you, you never intended to have a taller fence when you set out? No, we built it for 2.0, two for two and, meters. And, and then how did you extend the posts once you changed your mind? Pardon me? Well, the posts go right up to the top. So if you didn't intend to build a, t a fence that was too tall, why did you have such long posts? Because they kept on coming on the, on the side. So we built it all the way to the neighbors, the end of the house, the post. We put two more posts. 
and they are really, really, uh, um, they are like a, a, a deaf, uh, column deaf five feet underground. So they are really well constructed. But if you never intended to build a fence that was too tall, and then you decided to add the lattice later, how come your posts are so long? Because we decided to, to get the, the fence a little bit farther from the... No, no, tall, tall. Like if you, if you wanted a two meter fence, you would have cut the posts off at two meters. But these posts are the whole length. Oh, it's because, it's because we have the carport. We build it because of the carport and we just add the, the fence on it. Okay. Yeah, we, did, we didn't want to build the fence, but we had the posts already for the carport, which I have a permit for. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, questions of staff? Seeing none, Councilor Nunziata. So I'll move uh, number two to grant the exception. exemption. Any further speakers? Councilor Nunziata's moved number two to grant the, the uh, exemption. All in favor? Opposed? Thank carried. Uh, uh, 14, application for fence exemption, 209 the Kingsway. Are there any speakers on 209 the Kingsway? Good morning, sir. Welcome. Hey everybody, my name is Dan Voidovich. I'm the uh, homeowner. Okay, sir, you have five minutes. Thank you. Great. Uh, so the fence that's existing there, uh, that's there today, has been there for about, I don't know, 30 years or so. Uh, the only reason why I'm here asking for, for an exemption is because it's a fence that's made out of metal. And the new bylaw apparently now is asking for everything to be made out of wood, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. <coughs> uh, the fence is sturdy, it's solid, there's no signs of rust. You could stand on the fence. Um, all of my neighbors are okay with keeping the fence in place. Um, there is uh, one side of it that we may have to redo that when we were doing some construction in the backyard got uh, uh, broken down, so we'll have to fix that part. Uh, but for the remainder of the fence, I'm asking for an exemption uh, to remove the entire fence and send it to landfill and cut down a bunch more trees to build a, a wooden fence for the really the same thing in place. doesn't seem to make a lot, whole lot of sense to me. And my neighbors are also okay with it. Thank you. Any uh, questions of the applicant? The applicant? No. no. Thank you, sir. Yep. Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, question staff, Councillor Holliday. So this is a pool enclosure, correct? That is correct, Councillor. And so we have a very high standard of care that we exercise on that. Um, in MLS's opinion, is it a climbable fence? No, it is not. So it meets the requirements of non-climbability. It does. And so I understand, and so the, the committee understands, um, we're here today because the type of material used to construct the fence is not contained in the list of acceptable things in our bylaw. That is correct. How old would you guess the fence is? Um, 80s, something like that? Give or take. 30 years. Long time, okay. So, so there's a good reason why it wasn't necessarily in the bylaw because people don't really build this style anymore. That is correct. Um, in, uh, in researching this, and I know that I spent some time on this and I think the staff did, um, what did we find out? Was this fence ever permitted? This fence was permitted as per the old fence bylaw. Um, the reason why it's brought before on this occasion is due to the construction of the pool. Um, again, as Councillor, you did mention that MLS holds a high standard in terms of safety in regards to what is permissible and what is not. Um, this particular material does not meet the new bylaw. Right. It is a non-climbable. Um, we have done our research and if we are looking towards moving forward, it is sturdy. There are no issues with the fence itself. It is erected properly that it would be, if we would want to consider it to be a non-conforming use. Okay, so it's a, it's a legal non-conforming fence because it was built a long time ago. That is all right, and MLS uh, has no right to waive the provisions of the bylaw, but you haven't, have you got any concerns about safety in this matter? The only concerns that we do have is upon completion of com construction of the pool that the fourth 
enclosure is completed, which would have to be the fence as well, according to the permitted bylaw rules for fence exemptions or for fences. Um, other than that, um, there are no safety concerns as long as it meets those standards and that it's it, it, uh, fits the needs of that. Now, we're not, in this report, we're not we're not discussing the fourth fence, no, though. No, we are not. That, that has that's to be separate. built, but that's not before us today. It's just the whether or not to allow this old fence to stay or, or force the homeowner to rip it down and replace it with a wooden one, basically. We are we are not concerned in terms of the safety requirement. It meets the safety standards as per its erection okay. today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, Council Holiday, speak. Thank you. Uh, I think we heard uh, pretty comprehensively, and I spent some time on this. Um, there's nothing wrong with the fence. It's just uh, it it it's so old that it it doesn't fall under the descriptions in our bylaw, but it otherwise is a perfectly acceptable pool enclosure from a safety standard standpoint, and that's why I'm recommending granting the uh, the exemption. I don't think there are many of these fences out there. Uh, and I don't expect that we'll see a lot of them come back to community council, but uh, um, I, I hope the committee uh, understands that. Thank you. Seeing none, Councilor Holly's motion is on the screen to grant the application. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 15. Uh, 16 Nordale Crescent. Is there any speakers on Nordale Crescent? Good morning, sir. Welcome. You have five minutes, sir. I'm uh, Carlos Tavares. Carlos, can you just pull that mic up just yes, a little bit sorry. so we can hear you? Thank you. I'm the owner of 16 Nordale. Carlos, just a little bit more. Just, just yank it up there. That's good. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Good. So I did all the work myself on the fence. I was under the impression that it was four feet from grade to top of railing. Apparently it's four feet from horizontal bars, so that leaves me four inches short of four feet. It's an aluminum fence, so there's really no way of fixing this. I've got $6,000 already into this fence itself. I've got another $6,000 into the six-foot wooden fence surrounding the, the property, and I've got all the uh, self-closing gates, locks, everything in place. I'm just asking for a... Uh, break on this kind of great um, questions Councilman Nunzi any questions no okay no questions thank you sir any further speakers on the item seeing none Councilman Nunzi to speak So I do have a motion to grant the exemption. You good? Yeah. Councillor Holliday, speak. It's actually quite nice. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I'm actually I'm not going to support the exemption. I've come across this before. <clears throat> There's a way to fix it. You can cut clear plastic and you can insert it like plexiglass. You can insert it uh, between the two bars of the rungs. And, uh, and, and glue it in place or connect it in place so it's not climbable. I feel very strongly about pool enclosures and uh, I get this circumstance here. I, this gentleman has built a beautiful fence and uh, you know it's about the two horizontal surfaces not being climbable and it, that's the magic number is that it's less than 48 inches. But if it was my house, I'd be putting the clear glass in there to try to make sure that no kids can hop it. But uh, that's just my opinion on the matter and um, um, again, I feel strongly in this matter, so I'm, I'm going to vote that way, but uh, good luck with it. Seeing none, Councilor Nunge has motion on the screen to grant the application. All in favor? Opposed? It carries. Okay. 2.16, application fence exemption 518, Prince Edward Drive North. Tom Matthews. Mr. Matthews. Good morning, sir. Welcome. You have five minutes. Thank you. Good morning. Um, yes, I only wanted to speak, actually, if the issue is going to come to a rejection. I, um, um, Sally Wilson, the co-owner of the property, and myself built this fence after speaking with uh, the MLS about uh, the six-meter or the two-meter bylaw, six-foot-four. 
So we went, we chose to power uh, on with our contractor on site to build it uh, to a reasonable height, nothing to look like a jail cell of, um, what is it, uh, eight feet. And the reason behind that was to just give us a little bit of privacy in the, the issue with the privacy is the, the uh, property to the south of us, north of us, excuse me, is um, a rental. So the uh, landlord, I think, has brought this issue of that property forward to council, um, as which we just wanted to get a little bit of privacy because our dining room window faces the backyard um, where the tenants come and go often, and um, that's one issue. And the other one being um, there's a security light or a motion sense light there, which uh, trips often and then shines into our window, which is just more of a disturbance than anything else. But the tenants are short term. They come and go. We're not, we're not privy to them. We don't know who they are. Um, this issue actually, I think, has come to this far because of um, a request to actually have access to our private property down the side to help the tenants come and go. And that just wasn't going to be a um, a consideration for our, our home. So um, anyway, I, 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 uh, I hope you find the application thorough and, um, and uh, you grant the exception. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question, sir, I have questions for you. So this is part of my new ward. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I've got the report in front of you. I'm looking at the front of the house. Correct. If you look to the right, is that the house, is that to the north, I take it? Uh, excuse me, the I'm old, looking the at the front and you look to the right, that's the north. So that's the old balcony, the old house with the old balcony. What is the right. purpose of having that fence up kind of blocking their view on the balcony? What is the purpose of that? I, well, the purpose of that was, it's a good question. Again, it being a rental, there was a time where that property had, <laughs> there's been many people come and go and uh, there's been many a gathering on the front porch where um, where we come home and and, uh, and and the aesthetic and the disturbance and whatever of having, you know, there's literally nine tenants in that property at one point in that one particular unit where it was just, okay, are we gonna, how are we gonna live with this? But um, putting that up was, is just a matter of having some privacy when we want to, you know, maintain our own front yard or just be out in, among, in our own property, so. Okay, so now I'm looking at attachment number three and four. Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm so familiar. Why, what is the purpose of that fence? What is the purpose of that fence being built so close to that neighbor's wall? I, I don't understand that. What is the purpose of that fence? The, honestly, the purpose of that fence is because <laughs> that, if you look closely into that picture to the right, there is an askewed piece of plywood stuck to the wall of that home where it was brought to that owner's attention. There was an entrance that basically walked out of that house right on to our property, of which it was, there's been two years opportunity for that to be fixed. So instead of looking at a skewed piece of wall, we decided to build and- But how do you an see that? Where do you see that from? That's in between the houses. How do you see that? You see it when you walk down the side of the property. But how often do you walk through there? Uh, well, it's our one and only entrance really to the property so often, I suppose. And then I see attachment six, that's for the hot tub. I can see the windows there, I, I see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> okay, those are my questions. Thank you. Hmm? Yeah, I know. Any further speakers to the item? Good morning, sir, welcome. Please state your name. Good morning, my name is uh, Gareth Owen. I'm the neighbor to the north, okay. 518, uh, 516 Prince Edward Drive. Uh, this is a, uh, this house was actually built in the driveway of the house in question. And to Tom's benefit, the, the basement apartment for that unit was actually just trying to discharge during the excavation of this property. It was trying to discharge into a working site. It was, I believe, MLS or somebody within the previous counselor's offices that said that that entrance that was coming into that space had to move to the back. So the whole neighborhood was a little concerned about the rental as it is. Uh, also in support of his, I was just at the neighbors, I've just been down south, but just at the neighbors to the north of him, uh, one house down, they've both been hospitalized because of different issues, an elderly couple, they're in support of this. So they can see the fence from their property. Uh, that's Carol and Doug Dewar, 
okay? And uh, they've given support for that. It's a, it's, we're, I think the entire neighborhood, and not to Tom's detriment, are trying to make the best of a, a not so great situation where we've got a house that's now squeezed in. So things are quite tight. And as the neighbor to the south, him and I have worked out that we've put in privacy fences of our own. The neighbors as a whole haven't had any issues with this. His only issue, I believe, is because the current landlord of that property, the former individual that actually subdivided the property, is causing him undue stress. But th most of the neighbors to the s north of him have no issue to that. I've been involved with the community with regards to speed bumps. We put speed bumps in the areas. We do the annual fundraising for the area. A lot of the community members come to our house and we work with the previous councilor's office. And I believe some of the individuals working in your office, Councilor Grimes, uh, uh, Ms. Campbell, uh, and they've all stated that they don't have any issues with uh, the height of his fence the way it is or the height of mine. Being the neighbor to the north, okay, his right of way between my property and his, we have a fence erected there as well, is actually limited because he has discharge of his furnace and all his other items. So that laneway is the only place for his daughters, his uh, partner and himself to access their backyard and to get into their backyard. The individual that owns uh, 520 Prince Edward Drive had ample time to correct this. And as the neighbor that was actually there before Tom had actually built his house, we'd actually listed several complaints because they had plywood boards all across the side of their house. And they actually, we felt they actually had an illegal tenant staying in the basement of that unit. So I don't think that this complaint or what is called MLS here is warranted. And we've been able to work out our issues ourselves with regards to our privacy screens, mine for my backyard and his for his, his porch area on the side. So. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you. <clears throat> Any further speakers to the item? Seeing none, uh, questions of staff. Okay, just so looking at the pictures here, um, I'm going to go to number four, <clears throat> three and four. Okay. What is the bylaw with a building not close to your neighbor's home? I know uh, it's probably on the property, I would think. It is. So there is no real infraction in regards to that component of um, the fence erection itself. So let's say this rental gets sold to somebody else. How do they how do they do work if they have to get, do work on 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 like that replace that window the base how do they like how do they get in there to maintain that or it'd be very challenging to say the least because there is minimal space there um, again it, it'd be a challenge if there was anything to do with that part of construction and replacement of that portion of the building to repair in itself whether as a right of entry permit would have been needed, but still it's the actual distance between that if you're suggesting would be a challenge. Okay. Um, those are my questions. A any further questions, staff? Councilor Prutza? Cases like this, would, why wouldn't we permit, for example, uh, this homeowner to locate their house wall right on that fence line? Like, why, why would we allow, like, I don't know, a six or eight inch gap, like a garbage collector, right, to be, to be erected? And, and how does one, like, once, once garbage piles up between that fence and that home, right, how does one get in there to clean it out, right? Like, why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we then say to the, to the, to the other homeowner, look, you know what, um, uh, if they ever came in for, for, for a permit, why wouldn't we say, okay, you know what, build right on the property line, make your wall the, you know, the defense, as it were, right? I mean, very good questions for you, Mr. Chair, that you're asking. And again, it's hard to give an explanation or a concrete answer and determination of how garbage collection would take place if debris is there. I mean, various methods of creativity possibly can be used, but I wouldn't be able to give you an exact answer in terms of... I, I, I guess the question I'm asking is, is, is why would we allow... Um, a bylaw that would permit this kind of situation that's like really like nasty for 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 uh, for people it is a question to be asked for sure through you mr. chair that the bylaw is provisions there that says that you know property owner have the ability to erect a fence between the neighboring properties 
and it is in place. But even even if, for example, the other the other house is like two inches away or five inches away, your bylaw doesn't say, "Hang on a second, that instance you can't do it." Like have the wall act like the fence, right? I can see your point, Councillor, absolutely, and I'm in agreement of it, but as it stands right now, the current state of the bylaw, it is a permissible. And, and just, I guess, my last question to you. How would we change that so that this situation isn't permitted or allowed to, to happen in the future? with people who are in similar situations? Well, I guess we'd have to review the bylaw itself and to, to, to stipulate that fact. <coughs> and, and are you proposing that to bring back the bylaw for a review, is that it? Yeah, yeah. I, it wouldn't be through me. <laughs> it wouldn't be through you? Okay. Yeah, All right, thank you. Councilor Holly, to question. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I think through you to, to buildings, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if in this picture that post is obscuring that window, but would this become a building code matter if it was? If it, if it turns out it's a big, because th I think the gentleman said there was nine tenants in there, so I'm wondering if there is a basement apartment there. What happens if a, if a neighbor constructs something which impedes the exitability of someone else? Is that fall to you or is it MLS? Um, Well, and, and it's, I'm going to get into that as well. So I, we heard that there was a plywood, piece of plywood put over the entrance. Now, I, I'm not going to ask you whether or not there's a building permit, and but, but if you found out that that had to be restored, um, suddenly we've got a really big problem between two neighbors here where somebody can't comply with your order and there's a fence in the way. Right. And and I'll ask uh, just in case anyone knows or remembers, was this a uh, a severance that went through the committee of adjustment? So the OMB uh, looks like created a, an almost zero lot line setback. That's correct. The, I was directed actually. I'm, a, I'm one of your lawyers. Yes. Um, I was directed to oppose the severance. They retained the existing house. Planning was in opposition. Council was in opposition. I was in opposition. It was uh, certainly our view that it was terrible planning. The OMB approved it. Can we send a copy of this report to the <laughs> OMB members? Like, I mean, <clears throat> this is the implication of decisions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful. Council approves a second round. Is there, is there any way that we would be able to, um, uh, I don't know what we, what we would do, but to basically, um, um, you know, warrant the removal of this fence at least back to, to the edge of the house so that, so that you take out this portion here and, and you move it all the way back to here. Would we, is there a way that we would be able to do that? Because I would be interested in that because this situation here, we should never allow neighbors to do this to each other. Doesn't matter what their intentions are.
Any further questions of staff? Seeing none, I'm going to move to hold this down. I'm going to pass the chair to Council Ford so I can talk to Mr. Um, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Matthew. So I, with Council's done, I'm going to hold this down. Pass the chair. I'll hold it down if that's okay. All in favor? Opposed? Chair. Okay. Pass the chair to. We'll go on to 17. Okay, so we uh, will be moving on to EY 2.17, uh, application for fence exemption 48 Swordville Drive in Councillor Holiday's ward. Um, looking for deputants, uh, Stefan Marinov. Thank you, sir. You have uh, five minutes. Morning, Councillors. Uh, and you can just uh, adjust the mic. So we can hear. Thank you. My name is Stefan Marinov. I'm the owner of the property located on 48 Sorbill Drive. I'll try to explain why I'm looking for fence exemption. Uh, I erected my rear yard fence eight years ago and I wanted to do it according to the rules. That's why before planning the fence, I visited uh, Miss, uh, Topical Municipal Licensing Standards Officers and asked them what I need to know. The, the answer was clear. Stay in your property and do everything according to the bylaw for 47 fences. My understanding and the knowledge of the MLS officers at the time, the way I erected the fence was uh, within the requirements. My property is on a corner lot, which creates some confusion about whether the yard is a front or rear yard. The municipal officers also struggle with classifying the yard since they wrote, <laughs> wrote it on the notice of violation being a front yard, uh, which makes uh, my other yard uh, should be a rear yard. But anyway, the district manager classified my yard as a rear yard on your report. Um, since my neighbor complained last year, I have read the I have read the bylaw regarding rear yards many times, specifically the section concerning yards next to driveways. And I fixed the corner to my fence, uh, the corner of my fence adjacent to my neighbor's driveway. You can see that on attachment six and seven on your report. And I believe it's done according to bylaw 447, section 1.2, part C. What I'm asking the community council is to be financially relieved from redoing the fence and keeping the existing corner adjacent to my driveway. In order to fix it, I must replace more than half of the fence to keep it sturdy and aesthetic since the fence consists of already made uh, fence panels that cannot be cut to fit. As you can see on attachment four from uh, my typical parking spot, my view from the driver's seat is not at all obstructed and allows me to see at least five meters from the pedestrian walk. I believe there is no danger for the pedestrians crossing my driveway. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, question to the Deputy uh, Councilor Holder. Uh, thank you for coming to speak to us. The section by your driveway, was that always like that or did you change that? Where the basketball net is? You mean the section of the fence? Section of the fence. Was it always, was it always on an angle or is that new? No, this is from eight years ago. So you built the fence by your driveway on an angle? Yes. Now, on your neighbor's side, did you build the fence square or on an angle? I built it square. I, I guess I didn't realize that time okay. that I should do the same on the other driveway. And you're clear that this report in front of us is about that corner by your neighbor's house? Pardon me? You're clear that this report before us is about the corner by your neighbor's house. It's not about the rest of the fence. I believe it's uh, on the notice of the violation. It's about uh, my... What is written, it's about my driveway area and also my neighbor's driveway mm. area. So this says the north and the west side, or this says, sorry, northwest side of property. So failed to provide open construction fence within 2.4 meters of the driveway or required sight line. Okay. Yes. So did, um, did you make changes to the fence by your neighbors? Yes. 
I did that uh, last year. Okay, and so this report's still in front of me, so how come you didn't meet the bylaw? I believe, I, I am not exactly sure, because after notice violation, I came to talk to the officers, and uh, I couldn't get the answer. So did I you understand my, my corner. My corner is not exactly 2.4 meters what is necessary. So, okay. So your, your corner, you put uh, an angle in, but your neighbors, you didn't. And then the bylaw people came and said, fix your neighbor's corner. Right, and I fixed and, it. Well, not according to this report. So you said that you think that you've met the bylaw. If, the, if it's 2.4 meters from the driveway or the property line, why do you think you met the bylaw? I don't know. I measured it twice, even after notice violation. It's 2.4 meters from the driveway and 2.4 meters from the property line. Okay. And and what did the bylaw officers tell you when they saw you? Uh, I first well, they told me to move the whole fence. 2.4 meters from the property line. Are you willing to comply with the bylaw? No. The thing is, uh, I have to move it 2.4 meters if it, this is a front yard. But actually, this is a rear yard. This is the confusion. Front and rear yard's not before us. It's all about the driveway sight lines. Right, but if it's a front yard, I have to move the fence. 2.4 meters, so there will be no issue about the corners. I won't debate with you the bylaw, but would you, would you be willing to correct the sight line deficiency regarding a 2.4 meter setback? On my driveway? On, on any driveway. Sight line. I, I did that on my neighbor's driveway okay on my on my driveway in order to fix it i have to remove the whole fence thank you thank you councillor holiday any further questions to the deputy seeing none thank you very much sir um any other uh further speakers to um the fence exemption at 48 sword bill drive seeing none we'll move into uh questions of staff any questions of staff Seeing none, uh, speakers to the item, Councillor Holliday. Thank you. Um, I'm going to refuse to uh, grant the application for exemption. Um, this issue boils down to the sight line at the corner of the driveway. I'll invite the, the gentleman and, uh, and bylaw to see if we can make sure that this is cleared out. I understand there seems to be some confusion here, um, but to me it's, it's very clear. Uh, the corner fence creates an obstructed view for uh, this gentleman's neighbor uh, to the side. Uh, this gentleman moved the fence, but he didn't move it far enough. Uh, I think it needs to go about another meter or so, if I remember from the report. It's a significant move that needs to be made. Um, so if, if, there's, if there's an opportunity before you put a new fence post in to check with the bylaw officers to make sure that it reaches the compliance. And that's the issue here, is that the gentleman went to go correct um, the issue, yes. but he didn't correct it sufficiently. And the bylaw officer, in speaking to them, have told me that it's not acceptable to their standards. We have to open up the sight lines and we have to make sure that we comply with the bylaw officers. So for, uh, for that reason, um, I cannot grant an exemption on a sight line. Thank you. Thank you. Any further speakers? Is this your work? Councillor Holly's got refusal on the screen. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Is 16 the last item? Okay, so sort of do this, Rosemary. If we can put this on the screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to need uh, help with wording. So if everyone just bear with me. So I've talked to the owner of the house, Mr. Matthews. We really have a problem, I think, up here with what happens to the OMB. We heard from our solicitor. Like, that is a crazy condition. I know, I understand the problems with the rental next door. I get that totally, but this house gets sold, whatever. You know, you have to allow people to, uh, you know, come in and, and uh, get to their property. And I know he seems like a great neighbor. He cleans that himself in between the floor, but I want that removed. I'm going to, I understand the hot tub uh, component there I get all that I'm gonna leave that at the front I still got a little problem I'm gonna leave that but I'm gonna ask that he's agreed to remove that which he has and the rest I'm gonna grant the exemption so um, with staff I'm just gonna say we're gonna have to re remove the portion for the wording um, is gonna be to the house to the north he's gonna bring it to the back of that property the back of that corner of that house so 
um, so remove the portion to the back of the house to the north to the rear of the, the, the of the existing building does that make sense we and I'll grant the application for everything else about the house wall, right? yeah so it's got to come back to the back of that house to the north and cut it to there and remove that whole section then I'm gonna ask a, a bylaw um, or MLS to uh, look at that piece of wood that's on the neighbor's property understand there's nails protruding out there if it's an access for them they want to make sure it's safe if we could uh, have that explored to uh, make sure there's no nails and that that uh, gets looked after you got that Rosemary so you get you get with that so remove the whole portion in between the homes to the back to the corner of the the house to the north to the corner of the, of the house to the north and with that I think we got peace in the valley Mr. Matthews Donnie said okay you good Rosemary okay so can we send a copy to the OMB absolutely okay all in favor opposed carried look at that Bruce 11 o'clock you had spinning class and we got to look at the bills no, no. Well, we're booked in spinning class by council in the afternoon. Did we do one seventy the west mall? One seventy the west mall? Actually there's a time for a nice lunch, but it's short time for a whole group out for lunch. Oh. Okay. Well, Mr. Speaker. Madam Speaker. I didn't have a question. Okay, we got the bills. Do I have my thing? Oh, I got a question. Just a second. Hold on, Councillor Prutza. No, no. But every month you come here, I got to have the Queen there staring down at me. Hey, it. listen. Like a That's a point of order. Can we move her? Councillor Nunziata, you have a motion to introduce and enact certain bills. Uh, yes. <coughs> that Etobicoke York Committee Council passed and declare as a bylaw Bill 74 to 91 and 184 and 217, excluding Bill 90 prepared for the January 15, 2019 meeting two of the Community Council. All in favor? Opposed? Carried? Council Ford, you have a motion to introduce an act the confirming bill? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I move that in top of your Community Council pass and declare as bylaw a confirmatory bill to confirm the legislative proceeding of the Atomic York Community Council acting under delegate, delegate authority at meeting two on January 15, 2019. Shall this bill be passed and declared as a bylaw? All in favor? Opposed? Carry just before we adjourn. We're now seeing old Canada with God Save the Queen. Do you like the Queen? Motion to adjourn by Council Prutes. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in the back here, we got, hey, we listen, got, don't we got the native up. with the bone arrow and the, I'm assuming the courier. The we can have you move. Well, that guy could have come in with a hole. We could have moved.